Hello and welcome to episode eight of my Mindset Tips series. Four Mindset Tips to help you to perform better. Just a reminder, this is not a sports psychology course. It's a collection of individual tips. So that means that you don't have to have watched any of the previous episodes. But of course, I recommend you do that because I think that there's some really useful things in there. Now, depending on the device that you're watching, you can either see a link to some of those episodes there, or there will be a link in the text description and probably at the end. On the screen at the moment is the contents of this episode. So you can see each of the tips that I'll be talking about along with the times that they start. So you can jump to any particular point that you think is interesting. Also along the bottom of the screen is the new thing that that YouTube is doing called sections, which allow you to see the different parts of a video. So you can do that. And lastly, there are also links in the text description that you can click that you will jump immediately to those things. Just a quick mention about these two rackets here. These are the two Ashaway rackets that I have reviewed. I love them both, but links to their uh, re full reviews can be found in the text description. So that's it. Let's get started. Tip number 29. Good shot selection comes from experience. Experience comes from learning from bad shot selection. Now, what I'm talking about here is you can play for a number of years, but if you don't learn from that experience of playing, you haven't really experienced. You've just played. So I see a lot of people making the same mistakes over and over again. And there are reasons for that. For example, we get into a situation, we reach across, we go for a winner, and it's a winner. It wins the point. And that is a big rush in our mind. Why, wow, I played a fantastic shot. Why, wow, it was all I could do. Wasn't I fantastic? And in our mind, we build it up to be a really important event. And then the next six or seven times we do it, we miss. But we don't remember those six or seven times, do we? Oh, no. We remember the one that was the winner. And we always say, yeah, but I would have probably lost a point if I didn't go for that winner anyway. And that's not always true. So what this tip is about is saying to yourself, you have to learn. You can't just do something for a long period of time, you have to learn. When you make a mistake, you need to learn from that mistake. There's a phrase in English is, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Now, what that's saying is, is if you cheat me, well, you know, that's, that's terrible on your part. You shouldn't be doing something like that. But if you cheat me twice, and you've already cheated me once, then I'm responsible that time because I, you know, the first time I didn't know, but after that I knew. And that's the same idea. When we know that we playing the wrong shots, we have to take responsibility. We have to say, okay, well, I made those mistakes. I'm not going to do that anymore. Now you're going to make lots of mistakes when you play. You're going to, but if you don't learn from them, they're not valuable for you. It's almost as if, that every single time you play, you completely forget what happened. And then the next time you play, you play and you make the same mistakes and then you completely forget what happened. I mean, that would be a terrible way to live. It would be a terrible way to learn. Learning is about remembering and making changes. And that's what you need to do. Be honest with yourself. Don't say that that one winner is worth six losers because it's not. Tip number 30, understand and accept that confidence is not all or nothing. On the days that it's low, accept it and try to work smart and hard. What happens is that we don't have this on or off switch for confidence. We're not confident or we're not, oh my God, I'm gonna lose. It's not that. There's, there's like a lot of leeway between those two things. You can be quite confident sometimes or not very confident and that's okay. You're not a machine who can just switch on and off. You're a, a living being with emotions and thoughts. So don't worry if your confidence is not high. Accepting it is part of the process of getting better. There are times when the best players at the best events haven't been as confident as they would like to have been. But what they do is they say, okay, 
Well, today I'm not feeling so confident, so I'm just going to focus on the things that I can control. I'm going to focus on playing as smart as possible. I'm just going to work hard. I'm going to do my best. Nothing, nothing more can be expected of me. But don't make it this black or white situation, this binary, one or zero, fully confident or totally going to lose. It's not that simple and it's not going to be very helpful when you get to a situation. Day, except that there will be days when you're low in confidence. And you just have to say, okay, well, this is one of those days. I'm going to do my best and we'll just see what happens. And maybe as the match uh, progresses, you're building confidence and maybe it goes down. And you only need to watch any long match and you see performers go up and down. They're never straight up. They're never like straight across or straight down. There are lots of these things that go up and down because there's always doubts and hesitations in our mind. And accepting it is a huge part of being able to have a little bit more control over something. Because once you accept that this is going to happen, you're not thinking that this is wrong and I shouldn't be you know feeling this way except that you will and just do your best tip number 31 a goal and a plan are totally different a good plan with a bad sorry a good goal with a bad plan is just as bad as a bad goal with a good plan so what is the difference between a plan and a goal? Well, a goal is what you're aiming for. Your plan is how you get there. Now, actually, a plan really is just a series of very, very small goals. So you might say, I want to beat this player. How do I beat this player? I need to increase my fitness. I, technically, I'm better than him. Tactically, I'm better than him. But this player is just too fit for me. Okay, so I need to increase my fitness. How are you going to do that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is three times a week, I'm going to uh, go into the gym and get on the exercise bike. Okay, so that's a goal. Three times a week in the gym. Okay, well, once a week when you're in the gym, that one day, first of all, what are you going to do in the gym? Well, I'm going to do 45 minutes on the bike. Okay, so that's a goal. Okay, and then what are you going to do in that 45 minutes? Well, the first 10 minutes is going to be a warm up. Okay, so that's a goal. And you can see that a plan is just really a series of goals carefully put together to bring you to the ultimate goal. Every single action is a mini goal. I'm on court, I need to prepare, that's a goal. I need to make contact with the ball and watch it hit my strength, that's a goal. And put them all together and you've got a swing. So. You need to make sure that you choose the right goals. And I've talked about a one way to choose a particular goal, which is the smart way. Um, not everybody agrees with that, but it's at least something for you to start with. And I, I, I like it. I think it's a good way. You need to make sure that you follow those rules carefully. And then you have to have the plan. Having the goal with no plan is a dream. It's just something I want. You know, when you're 15 years old, where I live, when you were 15 years old, the dream was to have a Ferrari. Everybody, well, how are you going to get a Ferrari? I don't know. I'm just going to be so successful, I'm going to have a Ferrari. And of course, that's just silly. If you don't have a plan, the chances of reaching your goal are zero. Now, the other side of that coin is if you've got a fantastic plan, you've split down all of the, the, the items you need to do into you know well-timed, they're all really good things that you should be doing, but what you're aiming for is wrong for you, well, that's no good either. I mean, wh why are you, you know, if you say, yep, I want to beat this player, for example, but beating this player is, is a waste of time for you because you don't need to beat this player, you need to get better. Simply beating one player is not necessarily a good goal because then you have to have another goal every time you need to play somebody else. Maybe you need a goal that says, I need to develop better tactical awareness. I need to develop a better technique which will allow me to beat more players, different types of players. I'm not saying just beating one player is a bad goal. I'm saying it might not be the best goal. So you've got to do both of those things. You've got to choose the right goal and setting smart objectives can help that. But then you have to break it down and you have to be honest and fair and realistic and you have to break it down into those steps. And I've talked about that before, but this is just um, a different way of saying the same thing really. 
Tip number 32. Body language is important both for you and the people around you. Behave confidently and you'll begin to feel it. Now, I think there's a phrase in English which is fake it until you make it. And it's just that idea that even if you don't feel it, pretend that you feel it. And that's particularly important when it comes to body language. We see people behave in a certain way and we think that they're confident. They got their shoulders back, got their head up. They make eye contact. They, they don't move too quickly, like they're very nervous. They're in control of their, um, their body. Poise is a beautiful word in English, and we often use it with ballet dancers and actors. They seem to have poise. It's a great word. If you don't know what that word means, then you, know, you, can, you can look for it on the internet. And the point here is that sometimes we might not feel confident. Sometimes we might not feel that we deserve to be in a particular situation, but we should act like we do because people around us will see that and give us the respect or treat us differently. And we will eventually begin to feel it. It really is true that you fake it until you make it. And I think that actors uh, can teach us a lot about how to behave uh, on a tennis court, on a squash court, or any particular sporting arena. If those people look incredibly confident, then as a competitor, I'm going to maybe have a little bit of doubt in my mind. Maybe not, I'm not talking about mind tricks or anything like that. It's just that body language is particularly important. Now there's something called NVC, nonverbal communication. And apparently the experts tell us that 70% of what is communicated to us is via NVC. So when we see somebody speak, it's not what they say, it's how they look when they're saying it, how they dress, how they move, how they behave. Now, there was a time when I was involved with the London and Southeast regional squads. I worked with a coach called Graham Stevenson who taught me so much. And we had a squad of boys and we took them to different tournaments around the, around the, the country and we did regular training squads. And we had this one boy, John Russell. Now, John was fairly confident. He was, a good, he was definitely one of the better players in the squad. And he played in the under 16 British boys, juniors, and he won. And strangely enough, the next time I saw him, he seemed a little bit taller. He seemed, his shoulders were back. And we started calling this the Russell effect. Because after he won that tournament, he gained so much confidence. And I would love to have had some sort of photos or some videos of the difference between his behavior before and after winning that tournament. And he went on to other success. He did not, as far as I know, become a professional. But I, I believe he's a coach in the States. If, if you're watching this, Jordan, please send me a message. So um, just behaving can either be real because you've got that confidence or it's because you want to express that you've got the confidence. And ultimately, both of them do the same thing. They affect how people see you and they affect how you see yourself. Don't be with your head down, looking down. Don't, don't be like that. Show that you're confident. It will have an effect on your game and it will be a positive effect. Well, those were the tips for episode eight. Hopefully you enjoyed them. Hopefully you found them useful. If you have any questions about them, any points that you want to make, if you want to tell me I'm wrong, that's fine as well. Do it politely, but leave a message in the comments. On the screen at the moment is a subscription button. If and only if you think my content is useful, please consider subscribing. There's also a list, a playlist of all of the other um, mindset tips and another video that YouTube thinks is a good fit for you based on what you've been watching. And remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.